Hello, my name is Al Ackerman and welcome to the channel. If you like card magic, you're in the right place. If you love sleight of hand, make sure you click on subscribe. Now today I'm going to be doing one of the classics of magic. It came on the magic scene in the late 1960s. It's called The Collectors. Let's take a look. Hey, I did this effect the other night at one of the local restaurants here in Las Vegas, Tommy Rockers. And there was a gentleman at the bar, and I asked him to name a run of three cards. And he named the seven, eight, and nine of spades. So I'm going to use the exact same three cards, and you'll see why in just a moment. So let's find our seven, eight, and nine of spades. Well, they're in here somewhere. There's our seven of spades, uh, our nine, and our eight. And I asked him to uh, initial each one of the cards and that's why I'm going to use the same three I don't want to wreck another deck uh, but there was also a reason I wanted him to autograph these three uh, and that is it makes the three cards unique there are is no other deck in the world with the nine eight and seven initial with that guy's initials now besides those three I'm also going to be using these four cards, the aces. But I don't want you to think of the aces as four of a kind. I want you to think of them as two pair, our spade and our club. They're going to make the black pair, and the diamond and the heart, the two reds, will make the red pair. So think of these four cards as two red, two black. And I'm going to set them right there on the box. Now here's the important part. I'm going to shuffle up the deck. And we are going to uh, centralize each one of our three selections. So I'm going to take our first selection, and I'm going to place him right there. That seven of spades, right in the center of that deck. You can see him there. And we're going to repeat. Card number two. He gets placed right there in the middle, in the middle of the deck. You can see him there. And halfway down. Card number three, halfway. So watch that uh, nine of spades. You can see he's right there in the center of the deck. Now here's the important observation. None of the uh, seven, eight, nine of spades, got a seven of clubs there, but none of the signed cards are anywhere uh, near the top of the deck, nor are they near the bottom of the deck. Logic dictates they are in the center. Watch our four aces right here. A minor miracle. Snap of the fingers and one card now appears between each ace. And those are our seven of spades, eight of spades, and nine of spades. Now we're going to break the rule tonight because magicians, well, they're never supposed to repeat a magic effect. But tonight, our four aces, along with these three selections, are going to do a quick encore performance. So watch our uh, four aces right here. We are going to uh, lock them up. We're going to place them right here in the box. So you can hear them there. You see them there. Four aces in the card box. And then we're going to repeat exactly uh, what I did a second ago with our selections. We are going to centralize each one of our cards. So that nine of spades goes right there in the middle. Then we're going to repeat this process uh, with the next uh, card, and that'll be our eight, and he goes down in the middle of the deck. And finally, our last guy right there in the center. Once again, I'd like you to observe, none of the uh, selected cards are anywhere near the top. No nine, eight, or seven of spades anywhere near the top of the deck, nor are they on the face of the deck. Now remember over here in the card box, I put the aces in here. I've got our three selected cards right over here, watch. Just a snap of the fingers that fast. I want you to check out these aces. You can see them. They're in the box. But now there's a card 
face down between each ace, and that's our nine of spades, our eight of spades, and our seven of spades, all with the spectator's autograph. Hey, if you like the effect, give it a thumbs up. Now, like I mentioned, this is an old trick, over 50 years old. Roy Walton came up with the plot back in the 60s, and his initial look was this. It was two cards, two selected cards, are found by three of the aces. And then Marlowe made a nice extension. He gave it that look. Uh, three selected cards found by the four aces. And that's pretty much the way everybody does the trick today. And Ed published that, uh, one of the early hierophants in the late 60s. Now, Johnny Thompson and I were both Chicago guys at the time, and uh, we saw Ed do the trick. We really liked the trick, uh, the end of the trick, but we did not like the way he got into the effect. So uh, we figured out a way to use tilt, and then uh, Marlowe published uh, that version with credit in, uh, I think, one of the second or third Hierophant magazine that uh, Rockenbomber put out. And I did it that way for 50 years, but this channel is all about experimenting. And uh, I did uh, never change the handling, and then last summer, a gentleman at the Wednesday Night Magic Club said to me he did not like the way Tilt looked. It made it look too steady. So I came up with this technique, and it took me a little while. I've experimented with several different handlings, but to get into the trick, and I think it's a better effect. We don't use the tilt move. You really place the cards in the center of the deck. Um, so I'm kind of happy with it. And then I combined this with a, a version that I came up with way back in 71 called the Card Case Collectors, and I published it in a book in that came out in the 70s by Gambler's Book Club called uh, Here's My Card. Anyway, if you want to see another great classic of magic, make sure you click on that channel right there. It's one of my favorite ways to do oil and water. And make sure you click on that subscribe button if you like card magic. It really does help me out. My name's Al Ackerman, and I'll catch you the next time.